The Lord be with you. It is a real honor to be here with you, uh, May's family, as we commend her to our Lord and as we remember her fondly for who she was. And we meet, as May would want it, in the name of Christ, who died and was raised by the glory of God the Father. May his grace and mercy be with us always. As we gather here today in St. Matthias Church, a place where May would have spent so much of her life, we remember before God, May herself, a beloved friend to so many, but more a, a sister, a mother, a grandmother, a worker. She was a helper. She loved people. She loved her friends and strangers and people that many of us never met, and animals. And as we remember her, we remember how gifted she was at conversation, one of the commodities of life, and how she cared so passionately for life and others. And as we remember May, we place our confidence in God who is the giver of life and we give thanks for that gift of life and for May's life. And we leave her in the keeping of God, who is our creator, our redeemer, our judge. We commit her body to be buried. And we remember to comfort one another in the same compassion and love that our Lord has for us and that May herself would have shared in the hope that is ours through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we pray that here today we may know the peace of Christ in communion with all God's faithful servants. God of all consolation, your son, Jesus Christ, was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. We today moved by tears and, and sadness and thanksgiving. We ask that you look with compassion upon us, your children, in the midst of our loss. Give to our troubled hearts the light of hope. Strengthen within us the gift of faith, which is afforded in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we now listen to Joe as he plays Be Thou My Vision, and you'll find the lyrics there in your order of service.
as children of a loving Heavenly Father, let us seek God's grace in the midst of our own sinfulness, allowing Him to overcome any areas in our lives where we are separated from Him, be it in our thoughts, our words, our deeds, and let us seek His forgiveness. Lord, we call to mind your compassion, your loving kindness, and your mercy, which is through all ages. For your gift of love encircles our whole life. And we ask, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we stray from your love and our lives are broken. We ask that your word will guide us and that we always place our trust in you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, it is you who bring light to those who have dwelt in our dwelling in darkness. And you raise the dead to new life in your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us this day. Renew within our hearts and minds our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection. He who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have our first reading from the Book of Wisdom. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your order of service, you'll find Psalm 139. And if you would respond with the bold print. O oh Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You mark out my journeys and my resting place. For there is not a word on my tongue. You encompass me behind and before. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Where can I go then from your spirit? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, even there your hand shall lead me. 
If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, even darkness is no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. For you yourself created my inmost parts. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. And our reading from Romans. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 35, 37 to 39. With God on our side, who can be against us? Since God did not spare his own son, but gave him up to benefit us all, we may be certain after such a gift that he will not refuse anything he can give. Could anyone accuse those that God has chosen? When God acquits, could anyone condemn? Could Christ Jesus? No. He not only died for us, he rose from the dead, and there, God's right hand, he stands and pleads for us. Nothing, therefore, can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried, or being persecuted or lacking food, or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked, these are the trials through which we triumph by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth, nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I either drew the short straw or I think of it as my privilege to stand here and to share a few reflections on May, who was clearly my mother and grandmother to my children and um, obviously meant a lot to so many people. Um, Mum was born in August 1939, so clearly went through lots of change in, in her life um, since that. She was the first child of Elizabeth and William Burchell. Um, and they had an active dairy farm, um, many of you know this, I know, in, in the Mizzenhead. And she grew up and took for her own the norms of her parents, which included hard work um, around the farm, a vibrant church life, strong focus on family, nicely cooked, healthy food, much of it created on the farm, and active involvement in the community in various ways. And these are values and norms that she brought forward throughout her life and are very much part of her legacy to us. In 1961, Mum met and married Jim from the very far away Balladie Hob. And they had 44 married years together. And as her children, we heard very few rows between them. So if they had them, I guess it was somewhere else. And um, it was in front of us. We could clearly see they were great friends. And they had a really strong partnership throughout their happy life together. So growing up on a busy farm, I have lots of memories, um, along with Billy and Rosemary. We always seemed to be in the car, and Mum always seemed to be in the car particularly, whether it was getting food um, for us to eat or for the animals to eat, um, to save Dad having to change his clothes and get in the car, um, collecting stuff from the vet, heading out weekly to Mizzenhead to see her parents, with us three kids in the back of the car having our, our food. And many memories of her bringing friends who didn't drive on journeys they needed to make, whether it was to hospital or, or doing other things. She was always willing to help in whatever way she could and often put these things ahead of her own work, which then had to catch up later on in the evening when she got home. Um, Mum is renowned for her food, and I know many of um, you that have been sharing your memories with us, the family, in the past days have been talking about reminiscing on her good cooking and on the dinners and on different things. But I guess frequently feeding men who would be helping on the farm was a norm in her day. And Mum continued this practice long after it became outdated and maybe 
you know, not so trendy um, feature of modern farm life. Um, you know, we often queried, you know, should she continue doing this, but she really loved the chats and offering hospitality, and she really wanted to keep doing this until the very last moment when she had to renege, and that was hard for her to do. Um, she missed the chats, particularly, I think, in the current COVID times when, you know, the freedom to come into the house wasn't there. Um, with lots of visiting mayors, I mean, again, many of you know we had, um, you know, my dad had stallions, we had a stud farm, and people would come with mayors um, on their summer trip. Um, so we had maybe hundreds of visitors coming in this regard each year. And this really was a great part of the social life um, in our house. And mum loved um, people coming, generally loved. Sometimes it would be unannounced and she'd be scrambling, trying to make the tea and find something in the tins. Um, we had people from far-flung places, as it seemed then, um, like Clare and Tipperary. And they were certainly all saved. The filling station dreaded rolls um, by feasting on my mother's quickly rustled up meals, no matter what she could pull together before they hit the road. And before it was fashionable, as it is now, I think this you know, plain food and healthy cooking, she made tasty food with good quality ingredients always was her theme. Often organic, of, always sourced locally if she hadn't them on the farm herself. And this love of good food, she certainly passed on to all of her family, and it's certainly a theme still in our lives very much. Mum had high standards, though, as many of you know, so it often felt like we were still in training when we did the cooking for her. An exception, of course, were Sadie's buns, which always got a 10 out of 10 score. <laughs> Another part of food that many people remember um, is Mum's homemade brown bread. Um, she didn't use measuring utensils, sadly, so we have no recipe. Um, she used her hands as the measurement. And uh, we, many people queried, can you give me the recipe? And she said, I couldn't make it if I had a recipe. But it turned out pretty well, and we certainly scoffed enough of it as we grew up. Um, what we remember of Mum as well is her love of chatting to everybody, regardless of their background or beliefs. Um, the priority for her was always having an engaged chat and really listening to what somebody had to say. She didn't try to rush people on so that she could kind of finish the conversation and get home to whatever else she needed to do. Um, I see the value of that now as I get older at the time. Um, as you can imagine, it certainly caused some frustration sometimes with dad or us restless children in the car and we're waiting for mum to come along and wondering why it was taking so long for her to chat to somebody, but that for her was the priority. And that's something that I now you know, see the value in. I know she had a very positive impact on a lot of people because of giving them the time and the open ear. More recently, when mum wasn't able to get out in the car as much um, with COVID restrictions, she really valued the chats by phone. And I want to say a huge thanks to all who made time to have these conversations with her because they really energized her and sustained her, particularly when she was having some down days and not feeling so good about life. And they certainly gave her joy during these past months in particular. Mum loved helping and contributing to the church in different ways and the broader community. So whether this was community care, ICA, Mother's Union, church faiths, you know, community hall fundraisers with her famous soups and beetroot jelly mold, which um, I heard recounted to me during the last few days. She humbly and generously helped in whatever way she could. Um, and ultimately this had, I think, a much more, a bigger influence and impact on people in so many ways that perhaps maybe she didn't appreciate maybe during her life. So hopefully she can feel that um, in, in the next life. Friendships were really important to mum. I mean, she treasured the chats that weren't time bound, as I say, the laughing and the sharing of news and maybe a bit of gossip here and there. And the sharing of whatever she had to give, whether that was eggs or tomatoes and lots of cups of tea and particularly coffee. Um, she delighted in buds and all the local coffee shops and no trip from the house was a good one without a cup of proper coffee. Indeed, this was the very last thing that she asked for before she succumbed to her final sleep on Monday. Mum was always a dog lover, and in our house certainly there was always minimally one dog, often many more. Her special friend in recent years was Sam, and many evenings were spent playing geeker with Sam, 
And if you don't know what Geeker is, you can ask me after. And <laughs> Mum definitely felt he could read her mind, whether he could or not. I think he especially predicted when she was heading out for her next road trip in the car, you know, when she was well, this could be several times a day, he'd be sitting with the dash with the paws up. And I think she really delighted in him and, um, and that love of animals, I think, continued through um, her life. Losing her life partner and best friend, Jim, my dad, in 2005 was a huge blow to mum and one from which she never fully bounced back. Um, despite this, however, she was blessed with living um, for, you know, for several years subsequent to that and she really treasured having that time to get to know and to see grow up um, her six grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Um, getting great amusement and taking super huge pride um, in all that they did. In recent years, mum's health has been a challenge for her, as, as I think you all know, and despite the superb care of many medical teams and many medical professionals, too numerous to mention here, but thank you to them all, um, she, she battled everything and she overcame many challenges in the last few years. She's finally said she's had enough of the battling and has slipped away from us. We're proud and privileged to have had May as her mother. And now that she has passed the baton on to us to live the values she has formed as our foundation. Fly high now, Mum. Your memory lives on deep in our hearts. Thank you, Valerie. That was a tribute that uh, really honors your mother and is honors us all, really, because you share some really very fine gifts. Not only that she recognized as gifts herself, but, but as gifts she recognized that they need to be given to others and her life was certainly one of giving. I just want to share a few words with you myself and, and uh, I want to read a, a short passage, something you've probably heard before. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I have here a, a magazine which your mother was well familiar with. It's called The Word for Today, UCB Ireland. And your mother loved this magazine and was continually wanting the latest edition whenever it went out of date. And, and each day in this magazine, it is a yearly devotional and it follows the year through and various writers will take bits of scripture, often a verse or two, much like I just read, and they will digest it and offer it to us in more digestible fashion. It wouldn't be unlike how your mother would take things from her cupboard and serve food to people. She would take, go into the larder and come out and always have something so she learned very quickly you needed to dip into the larder, God's own word, which is a discerner. It is a sword that cuts through our personalities and our very spirits, and then to serve it up. But in order, as you know, to serve others, you need to nourish yourself and may appreciated that because she did appreciate coffee as well as enjoying what other people had made for her. She certainly spent time in the rectory with us 
and I know from her cone conversations, there's hardly a kitchen she didn't visit in this area because she loved people. And that brings me back to the passage. God's own word is nourishment. And May recognized that. She recognized that words were not just to be used in any particular way, but like a recipe that brings the brown bread together, you needed to choose the words properly because the words weren't simply yours, but they have been given us by God. God who created out of the word, let there be light. God who breathed life into us. So may took words to breathe into the lives of others. And she recognized that when you use words properly, people who might feel dissected from the community can be knit right back in. And oh, the bridges she built with her words. Many people who would never have come to meet each other became friends because of conversations your mother would have had, not simply because she was clever, but because she was continually nourishing herself on the very word that she wanted to feed others. And because of that, you cannot meet a person who met her who will not say, she was so good to reach out to others and so gracious when she was invited to join in. And you know, there's a saying, which I'm sure you've heard, that sometimes you have to eat your words. And you know, one of the most painful things May dealt with, as Valerie pointed out, was that she herself lost Jim. And those vows they made, I suspect, were they in Goline Church. Those vows they made in 1960, until death do us part. Those, those words were really hard for her to swallow. And because of that, she recognized she needed God's word all the more. And she certainly did because there were many a time I saw May laughing over memories she had of, of, and of her love for Jim and the times they shared together. And so while she sadly missed him, she recognized that she herself needed to continue to use the good words, God's good words, to build life, create life, restore life. And she leaves us that legacy. God who is always present with us. God who is alive, who may knew personally. That same God is with each of us. Our words are gifts unto us. And we can use our word to build life, to create life, to restore life, to be reconciled to others or we can use it to dissect, cut, you know, send people away, curse people. And, and I think that we're encouraged because it tells us, John tells us God is love. God tells Moses, I am that I am. In other words, I'm always present. And we read in the Psalm, 139, there is no place any of us can go to get away from God because he's always there whether or not you choose to recognize him. Now, if you don't recognize him, your heart will grow hard, but if you do recognize him, he will give you a new heart and your new heart will be softened to his own word and presence. So, as you go forward today, let us honor May by honoring God and honoring the word that God gives us, that we may speak it confidently, courageously, boldly into the lives of all those we meet, that we, together with them, might join in the glory of God.
Amen. And now we're going to have a moment to listen to some music and reflect upon the goodness of May's life. Again, you'll find the lyrics in your order of service. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for May, for the grace and mercy she received from you, for all that was good in her life, for the memories we treasure today. We give you thanks for the compassion and care you awakened in the hearts for all those that cared for May. Those in Skull, Skibreen, and Bantry hospitals, and all those who assisted May at her home. May our shared care, compassion, and good memories bind us closer in our union with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your servant me, as we also remember with her, Jim, Angelo, Willem and Jennifer, Hugh, 
and all those who have gone before us into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in mercy on our children, Rosemary, Valerie and Billy, her siblings Dick and Sadie, her children through marriage, Richard, Michael and Sarah, her grandchildren, Caroline, Andrew, Ivan, Roisin, Kevin and Tara May, great-grandmother of Siobhan, Orla, Owen and Anya, and all who mourn her loss, including a wide circle of relatives, friends and neighbours. Give us all patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal any memories of hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth to turn to Christ and follow in his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days, that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, and as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we now leave your servant, May, in your gracious keeping, in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 